Hi everyone, what's up? Joshua here from Alternative Brewing. Today, we're gonna to be installing the coffee sensor group head thermometer into the E61 group head of the Belezza Chiara, a popular heat exchanging home espresso machine. When it comes to installing the coffee sensor thermometer, it is very simple to do, and it is compatible across many E61 group head machines. Now, it will give you beyond its value in feedback with displaying the precise water temperature right above the point where the water contacts the coffee in the basket. And in the matter of a few shots, I've been able to understand everything, including the machine's total time to heat up, the best temperature to have the boiler set at, what temperature to begin brewing at, its pattern of stability during pulling a shot, as well as how fast the machine recovers between shots. And this does seem like a lot of information, but knowing this increases my accuracy and consistency when aiming to brew great espresso. So if you do want to shop the coffee sensor E61 group head thermometer, you can from the link up above. Let's jump in now though and see how easy it is to install one and how to use it. Now the sensor is quite a straightforward thermometer that reads both Celsius and Fahrenheit and it comes with everything you need to install it correctly. And it's with the majority of espresso machines, there's no real way of displaying what temperature of water you're actually brewing with, either through lack of a PID heating element, and these closely monitor and manage the boiler's heating and cooling modes. And PID is the preferred thermal management option on espresso machines, but not every machine has a PID, and they also do tend to be a little expensive to install. And sometimes machines even with PIDs have an obscure boiler temperature offset you use in a way to ensure you're not losing temperature from from the boiler up into the group head. And as best as these do work, they don't accurately take into account the current ambient temperatures in your surroundings, which can fluctuate say between summer and winter, or just leaving the AC on or the window open. So to install the simple group head thermometer, first you need to make sure that the machine is cold and is switched off at the wall and unplugged. And if it is plumbed into the mains, you want to turn the main supply off and the pump to avoid a wet mess. Next, we're going to remove that small hexagonal nut that's just above the E621 group head with the hex key that's been provided. With this nut removed, leave the Teflon washer in place and then add the additional copper washer that's been supplied to the end of the thermometer before then screwing the thermometer into place where the nut was. And you'll want to do this nice and steady as you do want to avoid at all costs ruining the thread on the machine. Keep screwing it in with your hand until it's nice and tight before then using the small wrench to complete the job. And whilst holding it here with the wrench, align that display up so it is facing the right way and then you're done. Now all we have to do is turn the machine on and then test to ensure there are no leaks. You'll do this by using a blind filter in the group handle and then back flushing the machine. Stand back and run the shot for a few seconds to see if there's anything coming out from the thermometer. If it does, turn the machine off immediately and re-tighten it, or in some cases two copper washers or even plumber's tape may be required around the thread of the thermometer. But once everything seems safe enough to do so and there are no leaks, allow your machine to heat up. At this point, turn the thermometer on and then just take a moment to observe how fast your machine warms up. One key point to make here is to not test the temperature of the brew water without a porter filter and coffee in there running the shot, as the amount of water coming out of the boiler and the group head, minus the porter filter and the coffee, is greatly increased from the 40 mils or so out when you're running a shot. So it's not the best identifier for brew temperature, but could be used to see the thermal recovery speed of your machine. And quickly I was finding out on the Belezza Chiara, for example, that the set temperature of the boiler, which in this case is a PID only on the steam boiler, was for every one degree Celsius I raised the steam temperature, it affected the brew temperature by half a degree. So I calculated my ideal steam temperature to be around 120 to 120 degrees Celsius in order to get a stable brewing temperature at the group head of 94 degrees Celsius during brewing. There was some flushing of the machine still necessary prior to pulling a shot, 
That depended on how long I left the machine idle prior to using it. I did notice that on the Chiara, there was also a tiny bump in the temperature of the shot around the halfway mark of pulling it. But I did find this was the sweet spot for the coffee I was using. And to note here, that lightly roasted coffee will generally benefit from higher temperatures and vice versa for darker roasted coffee. These are just parameters you would use to either avoid sourness in light roasted coffee or ash and overly bitter flavors in coffees that are of darker roasts. So in summary, espresso can be as much of a science as you like. And espresso brewing has numerous variables for making the best possible taste outcomes. To reduce these variables, you do wanna understand how the machine responds and acts whilst brewing. Or even simply knowing if it's hot enough to begin brewing with, will go a long way to enjoying that first coffee of your morning. And the coffee sensor thermometer certainly attains the relatively difficult information quite easily and simply so you can put best practices into place and continue to brew consistently great coffee and add value to your espresso machine that perhaps previously didn't have these capabilities. So if you have any questions on the Coffee Sensor E61 group head thermometer, add them down in the comment section down below and we'll get straight back to you. Don't forget to hit that little bell icon on your screen and then that way you stay notified when we bring out new videos just like this every week. And if you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.